morning and welcome to Huntington Community Church as we continue to look at God being our provider, our restorer, our peace giver. All these promises we've been hearing in Psalm 23. And as we've been looking at, we've been seeing how God is a God who leads us in rich meadows, who leads us beside still waters, and it seems so beautiful. And these promises about God seem so easy to believe when things are going well in life when there's lush grass at our feet and greenery and still waters and streams. But what about when things get a bit sticky? When things get a bit muddy and gooey? When we go through times in life where it just seems hard, where we start to sink, where we go through crisis, where everything is just a bit gooey and messy and hard, what about those promises that we've been hearing about God? What does it mean then? And that is what we're going to be looking at today. After our time of worship, Caroline is going to lead us in looking at, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with us, with his rod and his staff to protect us and comfort us. And we're going to be seeing that those promises about God are true no matter what circumstances we're going through.
everyone. Lovely to be with you again. Uh, just to introduce you to my angel on my wall, if you're wondering what's, what you can see, there he is. Uh, I made it at a willow weaving workshop, so just to allay any curiosity any of you may have. What's on that wall behind Caroline? So <clears throat> today we're continuing looking at Psalm 23 and we're going to be looking at verses 4 and 5. And the topic we're going to consider together is how to survive in crisis. And so I'm going to read some scriptures first, and then I want to talk from my own experience, and then I'm going to talk about the faithfulness of God to us in our challenging situations of crisis. So Psalm 23, firstly from the NIV. The Lord is my shepherd, even in crisis. I shall not be in want, spiritually, emotionally, physically, when I go through crisis. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters, even though everything is turbulent around me. He restores my soul when I feel downcast. He is my source of hope and restoration. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even in crisis, he leads me, he guides me in paths of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. So I'm just going to conclude the psalm because it's all part of the of the whole. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And that's a banqueting table. So a banqueting table in crisis is totally amazing. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows even in crisis. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I'm just going to read verses 4 and 5, which is the ones we're focusing on today, from the Passion Translation. Lord, even when your path takes me through the valley of deepest darkness, fear will never conquer me, for you already have. That's so important. You remain close to me and lead me through it all the way. Your authority is my strength and peace. Your comfort takes away my fear. I will never be lonely, for you are near. You become my delicious feast, even when my enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. And so... Actually, just reading those verses, I'm also going to talk on prevention is better than cure. I just want to bring another verse to you that has I been dwelling on or mulling on, meditating on, as we spoke about before, um, that is such a source of strength. This is Psalm 18, 35. And again, I'm going to read it from the Passion Translation. You empower me for victory with your wraparound presence. Your power within me makes me strong to subdue, and by stooping down in gentleness, you strengthened me and made me great. Isn't that amazing? So God's wraparound presence, the wraparound presence of Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Can you right now, let's just pause and right now, just sense that wraparound presence of them. Which is such a comfort when we're going through crisis. Um, 
So I just want to talk about some of the crises I've been through. Uh, one week after we came back from honeymoon, Peter and I, uh, I, yeah, I wasn't working because I had to give up my job in London because we'd moved out to Hertfordshire and it was no longer practical for me to do that. And so I was looking for another job. Um, and Peter live, worked near enough to come home at lunchtime. And so being newly married, he took great advantage of that. And he came home at lunchtime and I said, well, when you finish work, I'll come, I'll come and meet you um, in the car because I'm going to do grocery shopping. When I got back from grocery shopping, he was standing at the car. Uh, I haven't a clue how he knew where I'd parked, but anyway, probably his prophetic in most sense told him where the car might be. Um, and I said, what are you doing here? He said, the whole department this afternoon had been made redundant. So one week into, oh, it was three weeks into married life, Peter had no job. So that was a fairly big thing for us. But Peter was a man of strength and wisdom in God. And every time we hit a crisis, he would say, Father has not fallen off his throne, dear. He already knew. And so he knows every circumstance we go through. He knows how to comfort us in those circumstances. And... Um, so every time we went through a challenge of one sort or another, I had a, a miscarriage before I had Tim. I was 26 weeks pregnant and had a miscarriage before I had Tim. Um, and so that was another crisis point. But Father knows, Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit know about all these events in our lives. It doesn't ca catch them by surprise, it doesn't take them by surprise. They know. And I repeatedly say to people, Father knows. Isn't that a comfort? Father knows. And so through every crisis, uh, Father knows. And so that was a tremendous help to me when I, I still say it to people. Well, Father hasn't fallen off his throne. He knows. So I think one of the biggest crises and challenge was in 2011 when Peter stepped into glory um, <clears throat> and um, I was yes I was on my own and I remember turning over in bed about three days later just thinking I'm all alone now and Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit said to me and where do you think we are what do you say to that because they say they'll never leave me or forsake me. You know, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And so I want to just give testimony to the reality of Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit in my life over these last eight, eight and a half years. Um... I would say there was reality before, but my relationship with them has grown uh, to a level of uh, adventure and fun. And so how can we, I was saying about prevention is better than cure. Let's, we cannot avoid circumstances in our life that are challenging and can be crisis points. Um, but... We can strengthen ourselves in the Lord. We can build ourselves up in our most holy faith. Um, you know, and so as we live in the word, I would encourage you to digest this book. You can see it's a bit tatty now. Uh, digest it, take it in, so it becomes your innermost strength, so that when crisis does hit, you have a go-to place. And I just want to say that Jesus is our go-to place in times of crisis and challenge. He knows, he has a strategy, he can comfort us. The Holy Spirit is our comforter as well. And some of us lead to let the Holy Spirit comfort us in, in crisis. Uh, we like to be strong, 
you know, we have that British spirit, um, <laughs> stoicism that has to go on. But I had to learn to let the Holy Spirit comfort me in crisis. And as we build the word of God into us, um, you know, we have scripture to fall back on because we know it is truth. And um, I, I love the verses um, in, I think it's 1 Samuel, where it says, and David strengthened himself in the Lord. And so we need to start to strengthen ourselves in the Lord, make a practice of it. You know, strengthening ourselves in the Lord is like building our core. You know, you go to the gym and you build your core. Um, and so this is building our spiritual core as we strengthen ourselves in the Lord. And we probably all do it differently because we all have a different, unique relationship with Father Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And so I encourage you out of this call to ask them, how do I build my core strength in you? And go on a journey, let them talk to them, ask, sorry, let them talk to you and let, ask them questions as well. So, you know, how, why, when, what? You know, they don't mind us asking questions. I think I said that last time. And so I encourage you to strengthen yourself in the Lord, to digest his word so it becomes that part of your core strength. To, to build yourself up in the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues is one of the ways to build ourselves up, to build our spirits up. And another thing important is when we go through crisis, and I'll tell you, in bereavement, the lies that came to me were absolutely stupid. And we don't want to be in agreement with what our mind says when it doesn't match up with the truth of the word of God. And so, as it says in 2 Corinthians, Paul says, take every thought captive. You know, anything that is a lie that you're being told is an agreement with the enemy. And so I don't think you'll want to be in agreement with the enemy. I think when I realised that, I thought, oh my goodness, I hadn't realised that. And so, take captive every thought that is contrary to the word of God and contrary to his nature and who he is. And what I do is I take hold of the thought and I throw it to Jesus and I said, here you are. And he says, I've caught it. And so we don't have to live with our negative uh, thought patterns and emotions. Uh, we need to be building ourselves up in the word of God so that becomes our strength and to build our relationship with them. So I hope that's been a help to you. And I um, may I just pray for you. Father, I pray for everybody uh, who is on this call this morning, who is watching. And I want to say thank you for them. I want to say thank you that they each have a unique relationship with you. And Father, I thank you that they can go on an exploratory journey with that relationship. And so I bless you to thrive in the word of God. I bless the word of God to dwell in you richly. I bless you with hope in times of crisis. I bless you to find the truth of the word of God when you go through crisis. In Jesus' name, amen. So bless you all. Have fun. Bye. So thank you, Caroline, for that. Thank you for the honesty and, and hearing about how God is a comforter in crisis. There's promises that we hear about God a guide, a restorer, a comforter, in whom we find rest, aren't just true when everything's going great, but they're true when we're going through crisis, they're true at all times. This week I have been digging a rather deep hole for a tank that I need to put in. And actually, as I've been working in here, as I've been uh, digging down, it is a very vulnerable place to be as the sides are towering all around and actually, perhaps you have been struggling with something recently. Perhaps you have been feeling that you are sinking, that you, the situation that you're facing is unknown and perhaps fear has been creeping in and you've literally been sinking down. And when I made this hole at the bottom, 
oh, it was so muddy and sticky and wet and my wellies were just getting bogged in and stuck down all the time. But yesterday I uh, put in a solid base for the tank. So underneath all this water, there is now solid concrete. And this is a solid base now from which I can place my tank. And that's what we've been hearing about today, that as we face difficult times, as we feel like we're getting stuck, that actually we have a solid rock underneath us, that God is with us. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, why? Because God is with me. And God is our rock no matter what we're going through. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. I heard that a rod is for protection and a staff is for guidance. So whatever you're facing, God's promises are real now. Perhaps you need, as, as Caroline suggested, to remind yourself that God is a comforter in these times. And as we're now going into our next time of worship, remind yourself that God is a comforter that actually we need to come to him to be refreshed, to be restored, to find our provision in difficult times and in good times. So let us worship together and let us come to God knowing that he is always with us.
So thank you for joining us this morning. And now let's just close in prayer together. Heavenly Father, I just want to praise you and thank you that whatever we face, you are with us in the good and in the bad, in the easy, in the difficult, in the known and the unknown, you are there. Psalm 139 says, you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I thank you, Lord, that we are always in your hands. That your rod and your staff, they comfort us. I just wanna pray for everybody watching this video now that we will surrender to you in the situations that we face. Find our comfort in you. Amen. So thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again next week or in your small groups that are meeting during the week. Goodbye.